Welcome to this like a secret small little indie game called Skyrim. Got a long awaited re release uh, two years ago. So maybe you could know it. <laughs> My name is Todd, as we were introdu uh, introduced. Yeah, I'm Mick, or Mick Selected. And we will show this beautiful run to you. Uh, it's glitchless, so, you know, it's still Skyrim. Don't quote him on that. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, we had a donation incentive for, I think, name, race, and sex of my character. So I'd ask donations for the we, incentive. We do have a winner. The winner um, is the name Maidenless. M A I D E N L E S S. All right. So and the sex and class will be your choice. So I will select the fastest race, which is the high elf. Uh, the gender for that is not relevant. I will cover that a bit later why this is the fastest race. Uh, just Select a preset which appears to be. You know, I'm a ginger, so this could work. Uh, and we will name our character, which is Maidenless. Like that, I think. Uh, yeah, that is correct. I was told it's an uh, Elden Ring meme, so. <laughs> You're not I never played Elden Ring, I'm sorry. Are you but I think it's. I hope it, it makes uh, the person who Captain, donated for that happy. He's not on the list. Um, so now we have some time to, to explain orders, certain I'm sorry. general strategies and techniques um, because the run itself will start when we get control of our character. Um, and uh, the reason for my choosing of the High Elf as a race is that and this is true for, I think, uh, both Oblivion and Morrowind 2. Um, the speed of the character is directly linked to their height. So both the male and female High Elf have a height of 1.08, um, which is the tallest height for, for the game. So these are the fastest, despite any uh, character abilities other races may have that may be more beneficial than the one of the High Elves we don't use. So uh, yeah, that's the reason for that. Another thing uh, I'd like to cover now is the strategy of dialogue bumping. We can skip dialogue lines of NPCs by sprint into them. So uh, we will see that quite often, and uh, like one minute in to the run the first time, um, we will just sprint into the character, it, uh, they skip the line uh, they're currently on. This, however, has a cooldown timer, which we can usually skip by clicking the action button on the character, which may or may not enter dialogue, to, depending on if there are any dialogue options. Nice and easy. So uh, when it's entering dialogue, we just leave it and the timer is reset. So we can bump again and speed up things a little bit. So now the classic Elder Scrolls beginning. We are in prison, more or less. Now especially going to be executed and make us ready on the timer, as soon as we gain control of our character, the run will be on the way, which will be soon. So, three, two, one, let's go! So, first little trick, we will walk on this wall to skip the whole Helgen outside sequence. To speed things up a little bit, there is a complete Helgen skip in Glitched, but we mustn't use that in Glitchless. 
So and there are the first uh, character bumps or dialogue bumps. So uh, hardware is pretty slow with speaking. So um, Todd is sick of waiting and bumps him a little bit. So he hurries up and unties him, <laughs> so he can um, rush forward and complete this dungeon as fast as possible, obviously. And yeah, now we have equipped flames. Um, for the beginning, the best attack options we have. So flame does um, fixed damage plus um, burning damage, which is quite useful. Um, we will see that in the next dungeon, or the first big dungeon, a little bit more. For now, um, we won't really get into combat, we just rush through. Um, there's no need to defeat any of these enemies. But there is one thing we really want, two things actually. There were lockpicks in this sec in this satchel, and we want gold. We want 45 gold. Um, there were a little bit gold, but that's not the ones the Todd is aiming for. Um, there are two sacks laying on the way, and we want both of them. They are random, and it's not always 45 gold. We want 45, so we can trail warp, and then um, pay for a carriage, so we can travel to big cities. Oh, I, uh, it appears that I forgot to set uh, the refresh rate of the game to uh, the refresh rate of the monitor to, to 60 hertz. Oh. So I think I need to adjust that. So um, whatever you saw right there, it was not a glitch, trust me. Um, it just works. So that is enough gold, obviously. At least that won't be a problem. Um, uh, I, I will now, when, when I exit... Uh, the dungeon, I will do a quick yeah. setup for, for the frames. Yeah, the game falls apart if your if the frame rate is more than 60 FPS. So um, you really want to make sure this game doesn't run any higher than 60. Yeah, it's I mean it's it's quite an old game. We play on the original version from 2011. Uh, I mean we all know by now that there's like one or two more. Uh, re no, I don't want to go there. Thank you. Showing off my friends. Uh, could you please just wow. exit this? So, okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Skyrim. <laughs> all right. So, first, after we left Helen, uh, we want to uh, uncover or, um, some of the spots on the map so we can fast travel there later. Um, one of them will be a little hut, a little house um, right in the woods where we are aiming to right now. Uh, we need to cross that river for that. We will aim a uh, teleport or fast travel to that later so we can reach our first dungeon faster. And um, that's basically the first part of the game, just um, uncovering all of the fast travel points we need during the run so we can then just use them all as we want. So small little little tricks uh, to cross that river. It's it can be quite sketchy at the beginning, but after some time you know where where to aim and where to jump. Of course, uh, I mess up that regularly, uh, but no, that's speedrunning, messing up the easiest tricks. So this was the hut Mick was talking about, and this fast travel. You know, uh, the game lets us fast travel to every location we discovered prior, uh, as long as we have no enemies around and are outside. So this comes in quite comfy. Uh, the other thing uh, is the carriages, uh, which we can pay to, to get us to major locations. Uh, this is, I think, more or less comparable to the fast travel system Morrowind had, so Elder Scrolls Three. Um, so this is like yeah, speeding things up a little and one of the reasons we wanted to get some money. The second reason will be the guard warp, the first of it. But before we come to the guard warp, um, you will see Todd um, waiting all the time basically. Um, what he's doing with that is he runs until the stamina is almost empty, then he stands still waits for an hour, which will refill his stamina so he can run again or sprint again. 
it makes things just faster being able to sprint everywhere, even though you have to wait between those sprints, but uh, it's still faster. So and here we uh, get to the guard warp. Um, we will pickpocket, uh, pickpocket this guard. Uh, we will get caught. Um, he will bring us to jail. But what this does for us is we will um, uncover or discover Dragon's Reach so we can warp their leg. And this is a strategy used quite often uh, as long as we don't discover any uh, or haven't discovered certain place, uh, location for fast travel, or sometimes there is no fast travel location where the guard is bringing us. So uh, this, again, speeds up things just as a horse. And we all know when I get on a horse in Skyrim, what we're going to do, we go mountain climbing. Yeah. So basically, everyone knows this. If not, horses are famous for being able to climb mountains in this game. Um, they are really, really good at this. Um, so we will see how good um, in a second. And we will make our way all the way on, on top of the mountain. Not just to High Rodka, um, we will climb all the way up to the throat of the wall. So the, the camera can be a bit messy here. So if you have problems with photosensitivity and stuff, uh, it could be better to, to look away. It shouldn't be that extreme, but you know, just in case, I want to warn you. Uh, I will tell you when things are over in like two or three minutes. So the horse right now is pretty fast. Uh, the horse can be faster or slower, which appears not to be an intended mechanic, but rather a glitch thing. Uh, we, we try to, to get the horse a bit faster by selecting certain uh, locations or positions to wait to replenish our, our stamina because the horse, as our character, uh, has a stamina pool, uh, which isn't sh shown on screen, but we, we see when the horse gets slower that uh, their stamina is empty. So. The thing about these waiting spots is it appears that this is like a question of faith more than reality. So I don't think that waiting on certain points does help, but I believe it does, if that makes any sense, and so does every runner, basically. Uh, so, so let's hope you don't get any uh, Pegasus horse. Um, if Todd jumps on this mountain while riding upwards, um, the horse might get stuck in the air and won't land for like five seconds, ten seconds, which we obviously don't want. Um, uh, almost. Um, usually you can avoid that by uh, jumping diagonal and not straight up the mountain. And um, we didn't get one, so that's good. That worked. And we do our first uh, fast travel to this hut. You may remember from five minutes ago. Also, the photosensitivity warning ends right now. So feel free to look back on the stream now. So we end our first, well, major dungeon, big dungeon. Um, I don't really count Helgen as a dungeon. It's more like the start area, tutorial area, or whatever. Um, this is Peak Fall Sparrow, our first real dungeon. Um, usually we would, get, we would get a quest um, that tells us go there, get that dragon stone, get that golden claw, etc. Um, if we know what we want to get from this, we might as well enter earlier so we don't get the quest beforehand. So the fun thing about uh, the dungeons is that the dungeons show us that this game actually is not a role-playing game, but a platformer. So everything in the dungeon comes down to knowing how to do movement, uh, how to do stamina, uh, uh, stamina management, and where to jump, uh, which can, in certain places, speed things up quite a bit. Yeah. Quick side note on that. Um, you saw um, Todd doing the puzzle above the stairs. Um, 
every puzzle in every dungeon is set. There's no RNG um, with the puzzles in this game. There's a lot of RNG in this game, but not with the puzzles. Um, they are always the same. They always have the same solution. So Todd obviously knows what he has to do exactly for what puzzle. And um, back to the back to uh, the theory that this is a jump run. Um, another strong thing is we will see Super Mario later in this game. So um, make of that what you want. <laughs> so in a way, because we will see Super Mario, I have the theory that we will also see Wario and Waluigi. Possible. So possible. <laughs> in a way. This will be quite interesting for conspiracy theory. So, yeah, as Mick said, make out, out of that what you want. <laughs> so, so um, another thing you saw, thought, collect a scroll, and in this chest there was another scroll of fireballs. Uh, we need that for a later segment, which is, which is definitely the hardest segment in this run. And those two scrolls of fireballs make this segment, or this segment, much, much easier. Yeah, so it's a surprise tool we, we will need later. Um, speaking of platforming, uh, there's like the first small jump that, that skips like a second or something. So a uh, minor uh, way of, of perfection. Another thing, um, Todd got hit by those swinging um, uh, plates, plates, whatever. Um, they have a rare chance to give you a disease, um, and obviously we don't want a disease. Especially there are diseases um, that lower your stamina or increase your stamina consumption, which would be really bad. There are backups for that in a run, especially in the marathon setting. But not getting the disease bef uh, in the first place is like obviously the best we best outcome here. And right now. Dear crowd, dear chat, please help us with the RNG. Give us all your positive energy because we need it in this case because we need a certain weapon out of this boss. So let's pray for good RNG. And we have, of course, the, four, no, the second boss. Yeah. So, th so this um, Draugr can have a two-handed axe, two-handed sword, one-handed axe, one-handed sword. And this is also the order of which we, which is the best. So we want two-handed weapons. This is um, because two-handed weapons level faster, and we want to get two level ups in this run. Um, so it doesn't and really they, they deal more damage per second too. Also that. Um, so the best thing is uh, two-handed axe or two-handed sword, and um, one-handed axe is still a little bit better than a one-handed sword, but not the greatest overall. This will probably force me to do some rethinking of, of certain aspects of the route. And now we, we will see a pretty neat dialogue trick, which is that one. Got it? <laughs> so, to explain this, um, it makes a difference if you leave dialogues by using tap or left click. In this case, I left the dialogue via tab because uh, this gets us in a state where we, like for a tiny little moment, we are back in the game outside of the dialogue. And this starts the script of another dialogue that will start that is not skippable. So because this script starts, but we will be teleported outside of Dragon's Reach by the Guard Warp. This skips that dialogue and therefore saves like five seconds just by using the correct key to exit this dialogue. So that's, I, I think, and I, I had a talk about that with uh, current third placeholder Nuclear, we think that, that the most important thing for uh, doing a, a near perfect or top three speedrun or stuff is the attention to detail like that. Because there are certain, uh, a fair amount of places 
where you need such details to, to gain more time. Also pray for Angie again, please. So uh, this is Mermolnir. Let's um, go. Has different patterns. Um, this one is a good one. He landed immediately. He can also choose to stay in the air, which is bad because we can't attack him then. So uh, this was quite good RNG. Um, we can immediately attack the dragon and kill him. So we don't have to wait. Um, what, you first what, dragon you saw, down. what you saw before that was um, we went to their tower, um, discovered it, went back to the, to the carriage, discovered another city, then went back to the tower, defeated the dragon, and now we will discover more cities. Yeah, and during that we will have time for donations. Yes. Wonderful. We've had a $20 donation come in from Frog Voice, who says, Hey, Todd, Frogman here, praying for a good Septimus and two-handed weapon. Oh, this came in a bit late. Yeah. Best of luck on the run, man. Hashtag nobody likes Ratway Skip. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Frog. Thanks. Yeah, um, speaking of Ratway Skip, um, we will see that later, and hopefully we will see it successful. But um, it will be still a few minutes, quite a bit of... Quite a lot of minutes up until then. So, um, yeah, we will talk about that later then. Right now, the routing of when to take which carriage is not that relevant. The only thing that is relevant that we will go to Morthal now as the last uh, place because uh, minor cities like Morthal or Winterhold, uh, which we traveled to earlier, uh, don't have a carriage theirself. So we need to go there at the last, uh, at the last, uh, or at the end of, of this uh, yeah, fast travel sequence. Because, uh, you know, we, we can travel out of there by, by carriage to another fast travel point we need. Yeah. So this is Arnie. <laughs> um, we don't like Arnie. Um, you see, uh, we're already bumping him quite a lot. Um, Todd actually is so fed up with uh, Arnie's shenanigans. Um, he, he can't hold it anymore. He pulls a sword and decides to um, does the unthinkable. Um, Arnie obviously is a strong graveyard. He doesn't care, as we will soon see. Um, but yeah, Todd, Todd really doesn't like Arnie and I don't either. Um, so on a side note, I actually speed ran this game once, specifically once. And uh, Todd taught me how to do it and we discovered the game I have is definitely bought on a flea market or something like that. Um, there's definitely some creepypasta going on with my game version. Um, we will come to that a little bit later, but it also has to do with Arnie. <laughs> But yeah, for now it's uh, back to uh, hitting graveyards. Um, this obviously has a reason, and the reason dropped up right there. We want to level up our one-handed or our weapon skill, so we can pull that level up later because level ups heal us and fill our stamina. But still, a median doesn't endorse hitting old men on the street. Thank you. <laughs> so it's snowing. That's like a second of time loss because. They use their shouting powers to clear up the sky. So magically, when we exit the monastery, they're walking on sunshine. So another thing we are actually not sure about is, is Arnie the strongest graveyard or the weakest? Um, so if you look at the data inside well, the code, Arnie is the graveyard or one of the characters in the games with the highest level overall. But he's the only graveyard uh, able to talk to you. Every other graveyard won't talk to you because the explanation in the game is they would rip you apart with their voice. Arnie doesn't, so is he the weakest or the strongest? That's, that's, that's like uh, the question everybody has and nobody knows the answer. <laughs> so our theory is that, that Arnie is like the one the, the other graveyards train their shouts at. So we, we think he appears to be the weakest. So an interesting change in movement strategy now is that I tend to just shout and wait. 
This will change, however, soon because uh, usually the cycle uh, what enemies are nearby. Hello. Ah, a dragon! Oh. The RNG dragon! Nice. We love to see it. Maybe, maybe he sees a rabbit and tries to attack this one. <laughs> Uh, which, which does happen from time to time. Um, dragons like to attack rabbits or other wild animals. But of course we are not lucky because this is a marathon after all. <laughs> oh, there we go. We can wait. Bye bye dragon. So what Todd was about to say, in this specific run um, he only shouts and waits so he can um, set or he can wait more so the game is at a specific time. Much, much later in the game. Um, which makes it that two NPCs are at the right spot in their uh, daily schedule. Um, now that the dragon was there, we definitely did not wait often enough, so we will probably do not, or we won't probably won't hit that window, which is a four-hour window near the end of the game. Yeah, so everything needs to align properly. Um, I will try to, to get a backup, but, uh, you know, that will be hard enough. So this is another platforming segment to skip quite a lot of time here. Gold. Yeah, and we get that waiting spot, which is also like random, not uh, Andre exactly, but so you know. Big safety safe here because this drop is deadly. Um, if you don't, if you are not careful, you will die there. Um, here you can see the game gave got two shouts back to back. Um, this is the only section in the game where the game does this. Usually you only have one and then you have to cool down. But specifically for this section where you have to use the whirlwind sprint through this gates, the game is, yeah, take another one, then you make it through. Only here. I mean, they won't complain because otherwise it probably would be quite jank to go through there. But uh, it's still a little bit weird that it's only at this one section. All right, and uh, while we, are, we were talking, the dungeon is already complete. Um, the reason we went here, we wanted to uh, get uh, the spawn of um, Jürgen Wind, or what's his English name? Windcaller. Windcaller, oh, it's actually Windcaller, okay. Um, the Greybeards were, were like, yeah, uh, get that for, from, uh, for us, uh, we, we can't do that. And yeah, we discovered the horn isn't there, um, and we should go to Delphi. Yeah, Objectively, the worst character in the entire game. <laughs> and I, I mean, Delphine wants to kill Super Mario. And, you know, why would she? That's... I, I don't understand that. Also, the final boss, the courier, wants to talk to us. But obviously, we don't want to because this would be a time loss. So the rest of the run will be, uh, or I will try the, for the rest of the run to avoid dialogue with uh, Korea. Let's see if we can do that. And Delphine gets us to her secret hideout where, yeah, which is not that secret because most of the time the... Okay, I, I screwed up the dialogue. Yeah, so it's quite important for in a lot of dialogues that God chooses the right option. Um, otherwise, the dialogue will be much longer. Um, another thing you saw right there, and you will see much more in the up, upcoming sections, God grabs a lot of wine. Like, a lot. Of it's alcohol. energy drinks for legal purposes. <laughs> for legal purposes, it's energy drinks. Um, so what wine does in this game is it rebuilds your stamina. Um, it slows your stamina regeneration, which um, is not good, but when we use the wine, it's fine. Um, so Todd will collect a lot of wine during the game. So Because there are some spots later on where he can't wait to refill his stamina, so he has to drink wine. A lot of it. <laughs> oh, that was great, Andrew. That was nice. But, of course, we have the last RNG spot in the game. So, so everyone, send your positive energy towards this game because, you know, it's Skyrim. Yeah. So what Todd did here another, uh, was another guard uh, or jail warp. Um, specifically in Winterhold, the jail is 
far out uh, in, at the North Sea ICC, and it's directly next to Septimus Cave, uh, which is our goal. So it makes sense to just get to the jail and then walk over there. And no. this is where the IN next uh, big RNG segment is. We need to pickpocket or uh, two items from Septimus, and we definitely want to the, both of them to be first try, which didn't happen. Um, and now it's a matter of how long will it take to get both of them. So this this, was, this wasn't too bad. This, this wasn't too bad. You know, Septimus is, is a lonely old man. We just wanted to change that and pay him a visit. So, you know, he doesn't become crazy and pray to Satan or something, which he would never do. <laughs> and which, uh, of course, would never end badly uh, in another quest line, which sadly won't be shown. So now we are going to the next, the second dragon fight that we have to do in the story. Um, this is Salognir. Usually Salognir is not a problem because um, he's usually dead before he is completely alive again. <laughs> um, that's definitely not a problem. The bigger problem is afterwards we have to talk to Delphine and um, it depends on if she wants to cooperate or not. And also Alduin doesn't want to cooperate. And... You know... Oh! Salognir shouldn't be there! No, he definitely should not. He uh, should... He should <laughs> now be resurrected, or you should now see the animation of him being resurrected. Um, but, um, I mean, this is Skyrim we are talking about, and it, we know, all know it just works, um, as you can see. Um, so this should be the animation where he gets yeah. out of his grave. Yeah. Uh, ba basic... Uh, uh, I'm yeah. confused. Like. Um, ladies and gentlemen, glitchless. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I saw that once before, but... I... Holy... Oh, come on! <laughs> Why are you... Uh, I think you are inside of him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so and I... Yeah, now you're definitely inside of him. <laughs> well, that, 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 that was not supposed to happen there. And I mean, I mean could I, mean, I please I mean, let me out? I mean, that's probably because I tried to out earlier. <laughs> oh. oh, so, uh, uh, backup strategy. Of course, we, we are... W nope. <laughs> oh, we love some good Skyrim gameplay. Uh, let, 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 let me load then auto save. This is... Ridiculous now. Uh, that, that is uh, actually uh, ridiculous, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> so, every time, like literally every time I show this game at a marathon, things like that happen. Because, why not? Because uh, it's Skyrim. Yeah. It's because Todd Howard said so. Yeah. I, I thought already about changing my name because. <laughs> I don't want no part of that one. <laughs> oh, the Korea! Oh, no. They got us! Thank you! Okay, okay, at least now you don't have to avoid him anymore. Yeah, and, you know, it is a time loss, but... <laughs> I, I think there was one moment or the other where we lost a bit of time. A few frames, yeah. You, you know, there's a reason I put the estimate at, what did I put it, 130, 135? 1 hour 30. 130, yeah. So, that's a good reason. But we get another RNG shot on those guys. So we, we want a uh, necklace of Talos. Um, Textures, we love it. <laughs> what it does is um, it reduces the cooldown of shouts by 20%. Um, there is a backup, so Todd will get one later. And now we see the animation how Salognir is actually supposed to be uh, resurrected and then how he's supposed to die before he's fully resurrected. And you know, not ingesting us before <laughs> we are dead. Yeah. And there we see why one-handed weapon is awful. Yeah. This fight could be much faster. With a, with a two-handed weapon he would have been already dead a long time ago. He actually fully resurrected here. So, I oh yeah, also uh, hit Delphine just for good measure. 
Uh, obviously it's for um, for uh, we need to do some stretching here yeah which is very important yes, this is this is ing manipulation for the rest of the run yeah ob obviously uh, we would li uh, wouldn't lie to you so while i do this dialogue we have time for one donation we've had a five dollar donation from lord stroud who says hey it's amazing to see you at ESA. I hope you finish this run quicker than the crowd control one at GDS. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun and good luck. Thank you, Zeppi. Thank you. Yeah, we, we did a crowd control run like two or three weeks ago. Uh, that took almost five hours. Because, you know... A lot, uh, there was a lot of cheese. There was a lot of cheese and a lot of dragons and a lot of Bema Centurions. And a lot and of a everything. <laughs> And some bugs and glitches and crashes because Skyrim. I figured out how we're going to get. That would be a bad. Okay. Idea. So for some reason, usually she wants you to go down in her basement and talk to her there. Uh, for some reason, you can talk to her up there, and she just tells you what to do next. So right now, uh, the hardest segment, or one of the hardest segments of the run, comes up. Where we need to breach the Talmor embassy. Yeah, that's also the segment where we got those two scrolls way earlier in the dungeon. Yeah, because uh, there will be many, many enemies uh, that will follow us. Especially strong enemies. Oh, yeah. So that's definitely a spot where you shouldn't be at level one. Really? Um, also, I attacked a woman right there. Uh, the reason for that being uh, we want an execution to happen faster than it usually would. Um, because the person who is uh, getting executed has an amulet of Talos, uh, which Mick told you about a minute ago. Yeah. And of course, where is he? Why? Isn't he here? So, so um, it's somewhat random <laughs> where, where the body lies, but um, usually it's in that general area. So I didn't see a body there at all. Yeah, it's, it's probably somewhere in the cell, but somewhere means somewhere, which can also mean out of bounds. So now we don't have the amulet. Wow. So, so what Emlet would have done is we, we could have waited, then used the whirlwind sprint, then sprint, uh, so normal sprint with, with stamina, and at the end use another whirlwind sprint and then wait. What we have to do now for long sections where we run is um, run until your stamina is almost depleted, then use one whirlwind sprint and then wait. So we get less uh, distance in each waiting cycle. It's not the end of the world, but yeah, obviously it's a little bit. Yes, Madam Ambassador. Okay, more more character dialogue bumping, so they won't waste our time with uh, talking. I who does that? And now we we want to create some distraction. So the e uh, there are multiple ways we can do that, but the easiest way is give this guy a energy drink. And tell him he needs to act strangely. So he will talk about some things that are, you know, not suited for kids and teens. Um, and after a run like that, after the run went like it did, we of course take ourselves a little bit of uh, energy drinks. Yeah. So another fun thing about this is um, Malborn was like, um, should I open another bottle of wine? We don't have more. Uh, now they definitely won't have more because Todd took it all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... Again, uh, Todd's Telemedian doesn't endorse the use of alcohol, but we need to cope somehow. Okay, so you need to open this chest down there and read the book of Esper, and that progresses the story. And you see him equip both of the scrolls, one on the left, one on the right hand. So we can instantly kill one of the enemies with Ooh. the key we need to escape. And of course the other one survived. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a typical Skyrim run where nothing works out. I mean, this, this action could have been a lot worse. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but it could be better. Uh, after all, it's a marathon. 
So um, before Todd left that cave, he did a quick save and then left. Um, what this does is it's, it it does not guarantee, but it makes it more likely that you can instantly um, fast travel after you leave the cave. For some reason, if you don't do that, sometimes the, it, the game says there are enemies around, and yeah. So um, what Todd did right here, he attacked the guard and then put away his flames. Um, the guard is now chasing him through the entire red way, hopefully. So after we talk to Esburn, deep, deep in the red way, um, the guard will come and bring Todd to jail so he do doesn't have to leave the red way. Which saves around a minute, probably. Yeah. Um, so we hope the guard will follow Todd all the way through. Um, that's uh, also what Forkwise meant in the donation with red way skip, nobody likes it. It's, it's a little bit finicky and doesn't work all the time, so we really hope that it works this time. So again, this isn't RNG, but you know, we, we could still hope for RNG or randomness. This is a script that, yeah, is loaded faster or slower. Yeah. Also, in case you're wondering why Todd is almost naked, not in real life in game, um, this makes it so you consume less stamina if you run each full point of weight that you have equipped, I believe makes it that your stamina depletes a little bit faster. I don't know the exact number, but over the course of the run, it, it adds up. Uh, it's like uh, we are using up 2% less stamina printing. And the guard warp, so open up! Espern, Espern, open up, open up, the police is here, <laughs> go away. No. Oh, Espern, ah, oh, nice to see you. How's everything? Why are you hiding in the sewers? Do you have a, like, dirty little secret no one should know, like your... So we still have to bump in once and talk to him once more. Oh, 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 oh we need to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, open up, please, and close the door again. Of course, this didn't work first. So if he would have um, been taken to jail right there, Espen would not have followed him, so he would have, or he no would have must go down all the way to, to uh, take Espen. Take me to Delphine. We have much to discuss. So let's do this a little bit more safe. Oh, I'm hurrying. Okay, so now he follows us, and we are ready to get arrested. So at least second try, I think that's the first time in a marathon that this worked out. At least something. I mean, it didn't fail completely after reloading. Yeah, so uh, now we're heading out for uh, Radbalta, Radblata, uh, Dremer Ruin. Um, and while we're doing that, we have time for one or two donations. Thank you very much. We've had a $35 donation coming from Storms N, who was our previous runner, um, who said, I'm going to need to pay my bet seven deaths, if I remember correctly. Thanks to ESA, and good luck fighting the dragons. Thank you. And then a $5 donation in from Hero, who says, while not the speediest, can we all agree that Stealth Archer will always be our first love? <laughs> May the RNG gods be with you on this run. I mean, I mean, I will agree, to, agree with this. Stealth Archer is like the way to play Skyrim. The definitive way to play Skyrim. Not in a speed run, but in every other way, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Also, also, thank you, uh, Hero and Storms, for the donation. Thank you very much. So this would be the situation where we would use the Amulet of Talos to change our movement cycle to shout, sprint, shout, instead of sprint and shout. I need to change things up a little bit. Uh, the whole strategy with when to wait and how often to wait, so the character cycles, the daily routines align later on, it's, it's over. So we, we will not be able to... Oh, I, I lost count on, on how much I, uh, I waited and stuff. Uh, so we will be surprised where Balgruf and, and uh, Ani will be at the end. So, so two things about the upcoming dungeon. The first thing is um, Todd will be or won't be able to wait at most places, so 
that's one of the first points where he will drink a lot of energy drinks. And the second is, you may remember if you played this game, this is actually the dungeon where you get the Elder Scroll, which is, if you play the, uh, the story quest by quest, is much, much later. Um, but uh, nobody's going to stop us to get it right now and doing things out of order. Um, so that's what we are going to do. Also, Esburn is following us still. That's uh, important to uh, keep in mind because um, usually you get Esper and bring him to the Delphine. Um, in this case, he, he can tag along for a while. Um, doesn't matter. Also, these plates are deadly. Most traps in Skyrim aren't really that dangerous. These plates will kill you if they hit you. Yeah, I'm very confused by not having the amulet of Talos because this screws with the movement and I don't exactly so I get that waiting point which is good nice um, because you need to to be very fast in the uh, zone before to get so, that waiting point so and right here uh, we won't go around we will just uh, platform up I mean is this is a Super Mario game as we established earlier so yeah, it saves a lot of time instead of going around and walking all the way up. You can just jump up there. Yeah, and usually that, uh, in comparison to the strategy we used uh, like a year earlier, uh, this would have given us a spare whirlwind sprint. Ah, oh, of course I cannot wait here because why not? Um, this would have given us a, a spare whirlwind sprint, um, but now because I lack the amulet, it so this, didn't work out. Yeah. So this section is a little bit scary after he um, removed all of these four bones, bone fragments or whatever, um, because then he has to wait until the bridge drops and the uh, Centurio wakes up while Todd is being attacked by, attacked by all these Falma, and there is one with a nice spell, which is bad. Um, ice um, depletes your stamina, uh, stamina when you get hit with that, so you kind of don't want that. Oh, 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 go away, please, thank you very much, bye-bye, so have a nice day. But, but uh, I think you can see why I Whew. said this section is a, bit, a little bit intense. <laughs> a tiny little bit. Oh, a little bit. But, you know, usually this is the most fun part in a way, because most of the time, this segment comes down to, to skill rather than randomness. Um, like the lack of skill ooh, here, ooh. for example. Um, save, save, save it. Uh, um, because this is much, much, comes much down to movement and yeah, platforming, doing some, some tricks, searching for, for the last bit of time. Uh, you can gain by by perfection of your movement cycles, and so usually this is one of the favorite segments of of most runners when it works out. Not not like today, but you know, I'm I'm a university student. It's not exactly the time where where I'm awake, so I I think for for eight thirty. I, I'm doing good enough. So safety safe here because we can soft lock at this yeah. machine. I, I, I think most people, or at least a lot of people who played this game casually also had this soft lock. Yeah. I mean, I, I know I had it twice with the old version when I was just playing this game casually. So uh, this happens quite a lot. So setting, uh, doing a safety safe, safety quick safe is definitely a good idea. So, but this time everything worked out correctly. We can extract the Elder Scroll out of Bean. And now we're doing something, or we, we, we go for Skyhaven Temple, which prior to the Talos Amulet strat uh, was a bit more early than now, because uh, this again would be a moment where we would gain some time because of this new movement cycle. 
Uh, obviously, right now I, I won't save any time because I don't have the amulet. But, you know, if I'm lucky, there, there will be a dragon that would have prevented me from waiting after all. So, but, so this, 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 this path from uh, Markov to the, um, to the dungeon is, is notorious to have a, or to spawn a dragon. So it's not unheard of that there will be a, or there can be a dragon that spawns here. But you know, obviously, this is the one moment, the one single moment in this run where I get good Andre. True. Like, there's no dragon. Dragon? So, so what I like, um, no? the, the old role, uh, the old route was like, when this one was way earlier in the run, um, there. A lot of times there was the dragon spawning here, and then you got caught by the courier. And if you are, if you were lucky, the dragon would not attack you, but the courier, so you could run away and then wait again, which was always quite funny. Yeah. Also, you sometimes are lucky again because uh, the dragon finds like a rabbit or something, uh, which is more interesting than the Dovahkiin, and I think less dangerous for, for a dragon. So, and, I, and I, more uh, platforming? Yeah. So, funny enough, this is something I didn't know prior to, to the speedrun, but many people do casually. Yeah, that especially in this dungeon, this jumps, um, most people do them casually. I mean, even I, I, I did, I lo know a lot of other people that um, do this casually when they are just playing. Without even looking at a speedrun before that, because it's it's quite obvious that you can jump up there. Uh, you, you know, they they didn't even try. One side has like walls to it uh, that you cannot pass, um, like invisible walls. Uh, but the other side doesn't. So all you need to do is go around the one wall and yeah, enter enter that platform from another side. So let's get some more energy drinks until Aspen is ready. And we will take both Aspen and Delphine with us to this segment. We wait and they will spawn here. Yeah, and there's a lot of dialogue now and uh, Aspen is uh, explaining Alduin's wall, which really doesn't care to, uh, it's not interesting to us. So, I think this is a good time for donations. Thank you very much. We've had a $20 donation come in from Mr. Korish, who says, Hey, you're finally awake. Thank you. We also have another $20 donation in from The Quantum Law, who says, Good luck. Skyrim, as always, seems to be unpredictable. <laughs> it is, yes. And an $11 and 11 cent donation come in from Kronos, who says, Hey, oh, Todd, it's Kronos. Thanks for showing off Skyrim in the run, and hope that Alduin fight goes well. Much love from the Elder Scrolls speedrunning community. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Um, so what Todd picked up earlier was the, the one-handed sword Dragonbane, um, which has an enchantment on it that deals uh, more damage to dragons. Um, I, For some reason, I mean... Things went wrong in this run, and um, Todd had it already only had it once that this Dragonbane sword did not have the enchantment for some reason. I mean, it would be funny if this would have been today, or also today. I mean... It would not. Thank you. I mean... <laughs> it wouldn't be good, but it would be funny. <laughs> for you, maybe. <laughs> for me and the entire audience. I, I, I got enough <laughs> shenanigans by, by that game for today. <laughs> True. <laughs> Again, there was another uh, funny thing that uh, Angier can be on three different seats and he chose the one seat that is the slowest uh, because it's the furthest away and this here uh, is a bit slower because of that and, and stuff. Things are connected quite, quite weirdly. But right now we can let the game crash. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it just works. 
So, uh, yeah. So, 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 will you? Add, so, will you go through with your with your thought the last couple of days that you would donate 10 euro or dollars for each crash? I mean, let's 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 go for that. Nice. So, first crash, 10 dollars for for the good cause. Nice one. Let's try that again. Uh, what the crash or um, playing the game? You know, I, I, I told you, I, I am a university student. I, it's not like, I mean, I need to buy a train ticket home <laughs> somehow. But I, I hope that this is the only crash. I'm, I mean, I, I guess I jinxed it for now. So, so the funny thing is, um, I, I was crazy enough to do this exact um, promise during his crowd control run, I said I will donate five euros for each um, crash during crowd control. And uh, everybody told me I was crazy, but I had I had faith in the spaghetti code. Um, and it only crashed once. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I have days where it crashes like three times in a row, which ends a, a, a PB attempt. But this one day with crowd control, <laughs> With, with crowd control, where so many effects were, were triggered, I think we, we made uh, 1,300 euros for the good cause that evening. In five hours, which is usually a 70 minutes run. But you know, that was the one day where the game worked. Uh, I, I can't understand anything about that game. It just works. <laughs> you mean, you know, I I run this game for two years now, but I, I still understand nothing about it, because there is nothing to understand. All right, and we are still waiting a little bit more. We have to learn another shout so we can uh, we get clear skies, so we can finish the game. Um, while we are doing this, I see there are new donations, so um, I would give the mic to you again. Well, thank you very much. There's a $5 donation that's coming from a Whitey Satrun who says, does anyone perhaps have cheese for everyone? <laughs> uh, thank you. And a second $5 donation is coming from Boogie Poppy who says, a new hand touches the beacon. And that went towards the Pokemon Red Blue Any Percent Name the Trainer incentive. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And um, oh, thank you. Now, now you will see what we were talking about. Um, Super Mario arrives! That's, that's, that's Super Mario. That's Super Mario. And um, yeah, it's, it's funny because it's true. It's true. Um, this is the same um, voice then, uh, as Super Mario. Yeah. The great Charles Martinet voices Pathonax. Yeah. So, so not Chris Pratt, the, the original Mario. <laughs> you know, I, I think I can see the beard here. Yeah, a little bit. And... Uh, I, I think I'm pretty sure that there will be a mod reskinning Python Access Super Mario. I, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. So uh, we speed up things a little because we got a Dragon Soul left. So we learn Fire Breath by ourselves and not, not uh, by Python yeah, Usually he would uh, share his knowledge about this shout, but uh, he still has had a Dragon Soul or in the uh, reserve, so he used that. So uh, Patronax wasn't like, yeah, here, you have my knowledge or whatever. And we are standing exactly at the spot where we can use the Elder Scroll, which we will do right now after this conversation. And then we have like a five minute cutscene. Um, in this cutscene, there's something really, really funny that can happen. And I hope and I beg you, chat and audience, pray for RNG that this funny thing will happen. Um, if Those it will happen, you will see what it is. It. <laughs> it's like a great meme. It's, it's definitely a great meme. Would be a great emote too. So I already thought about adding it <laughs> to my chat. It's all about this little lizard. So he has to be defeated first, um, which is like half a minute from now. But let's see if this will happen this time. 
So the problem is these cutscenes are no real cutscenes, they are rendered live in the uh, game engine. So this is a bit different each time. We'll see, will we get the meme? Will it be there? And ladies and gentlemen, we come uh, on! So, so to explain what can happen there, he can lay there dead with his mouth wide open. And we, he call, goes we, we, we call it the Pog Dragon because it literally looks like the new Pog Champ emote. Sadly, it didn't happen. Um, but the cutscene is still going on for quite a while. So um, there's definitely time for more donations. Thank you. There's a $5 donation that's coming from Mobongo, who says, that's so nice that the game just works. <laughs> Keep on running, my little Viking. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, so basically, we, right now, we traveled in time, uh, back in time, uh, with the scroll that he has with him. Uh, and this is the whole story of the game. So there is this prophecy um, that after the happenings of the Elder Scrolls 1 to like the beginning of Skyrim, all of these events led up to the return of Alduin, the world eater, who wants to not only devour this world, but also uh, every soul in like Valhalla, Sovngarde. And uh, here the whole affair starts because, spoiler alert, two of these, uh, or one, one of these uh, people will not survive this day. And they see, because they are not dragonborn, they cannot defeat Alduin by themselves. So what they do is using the Elder Scroll we discovered in the Dwemer Rune, and use the scroll to shout or to send Alduin forward in time. Well, well, technically they use the scroll to banish him. They don't know what the scroll do is doing. But yeah, they end up sending Alduin in the future. And uh, so these people are the whole reason that the world could be ending right now. I mean... I'm not sure if we can, can defeat Alduin for good, because maybe the game crashes again, maybe the game deletes itself, corrupting the whole PC, ending the whole ESA marathon. Who knows? Let, let's hope not. <laughs> I do. So this is basically also a cutscene where some of my PB attempts and even one world record pace died because Alduin sometimes doesn't spawn into the cutscene because it just works. And speaking of run killer, after this cutscene is the hardest fight in the game. Um, it's Alduin 1. First fight against Alduin. Um, it's by far the hardest fight in the game. Yeah, and that's... What kills runs, indeed. Um, because, you know, people make fun of the dragon fights becoming boring. But when you're level 2, dragon fights can be quite challenging. Especially Alduin 1. <laughs> yeah. So, let's go to work. So, the threat is, even before we can see him um, equip all we need, and then directly shout the dragon rent, or the new shout we learned from this... Uh, past experience um, to to ground him. So with Dragon Rent, if you hit the dragon with that, they can't fly anymore and they la have to land and stay on the ground for a certain amount of time. And we want to hit Alduin immediately so he doesn't fly around and waste time. And that hit. Okay, that worked out pretty well. He will land directly, which speeds up things Quite a bit, and I don't want to get devoured again. Thank yeah. you. So, so another threat for dragon fights, which we uh, didn't uh, explain so far. Um, you usually want to attack the dragon from the side, so um, at its wing, because if you attack it in front, he, he can bite you, which does a lot of damage. If you attack him from behind, uh, he can pound you with his with his tail, which also does a lot of damage. 
but the wing attacks from the dragons are usually the weakest ones, so you usually want to stay at the side of them. But to the side of them, yeah. So and also the reason I picked up a dagger is that the power attack will have the speed of the fastest weapon equipped when you got uh, the dual wielding equipment. Yeah, so we have the speed, uh, but the power attack has the speed of the dagger, but the damage also of Dragon Bane still. So, so and since, since we only uh, got one handed uh, from the beginning of the game, we had to use Dragon Bane earlier. Um, and you see it to the bottom right, um, above the stamina bar, there's a tiny little bar, which is half empty right now. This is how much enchantment uh, Dragon Bane has left. And yeah. this is how much we have for the last Alduin fight. Uh, usually, uh, I think this is not enough, but the last Alduin fight is not the most difficult one because you have the three heroes with you who actually do a lot more damage than you. So, so this would be the moment where... Oh, it's way too early. Yeah. So um, if, it, if it would have been later or if it, the, the waiting would have worked as we wanted, um, Balkruf would have been, or would have sit at the table and had breakfast or whatever. Um, now he just dropped in there and we had to wait a little bit. So now we we make, or we we ask him kindly if we may get a dragon to his home, which you know, I don't exactly understand why he says no to us. Um, but fun, funny enough, the reason is not the dragon that you want to, to get the dragon to his home, but rather, you know, there's this civil war, and when there's a dragon at my home, I can't take care of the civil war, cannot defeat, uh, de defend my city. So please negotiate a truce before we get, get this dragon into the castle. So, so I would love if there would be a way to skip that um, without glitches. So, so the glitched main quest speedrun category already uh, skips the Peace Council. Um, obviously with glitches, um, we can't do that here. Um, for obvious um, I mean, there would be one way to skip that by solving the civil war, but uh, yeah, that's, that's no, 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 not an option at all because that would take like another hour or something like that. Do you have some reason? Right. But yeah, because we can't skip that, we have to sit through an eight-minute cutscene, like two or three minutes. So, yeah. Oh yeah, also another thing, um, while um, Pot is uh, going to Tullius and, um, and Ulfric, um, when we went to uh, Arni last time, um, usually he's like at, either in the backyard or in the building itself. The one time Todd taught me how to speedrun this game, Arnie was on the tower that stands in the backyard of uh, uh, High Rodka. And we looked it up, that that's not a place in his schedule. He is not supposed to be there. Nobody has seen this before. For me, he was on the top of the tower meditating. <laughs> and fu funny enough is, it looked like he should be there because he, he was aligned with, with, you know, looking down of the tower, seeing up to the sky. It, it looked intended, but uh, I mean, you never know. <laughs> uh, for this game, you really never yeah. know. Um, so right now we invited everyone over to Peace Council and now I will show you a skip, which, yeah saves like 15 seconds. Uh, it starts with not talk, talking to Arnie right now, but rather sit down. So he starts to talk to us now, and we let the dialogue be. Yep. In the background, they are, uh, the, the whole Peace Council dialogue will start. Usually, Arnie would have something to say for this dialogue. But, you know, he's right now locked in the dialogue with us. So his dialogue lines will be skipped. And when, as soon as Tullius shakes his head, indicating he's finished with talking, 
I do one left click. Again, this is very important that you don't exit the Arnie dialog with, by any other means than left clicking, because it appears that left clicking buffers the input into Ulfric's dialog, where we need to select the first dialog option. And before we can do so manually, we yeah, can do that by buffering the input. And the whole thing saves like 15 seconds. I'm pretty proud of that because it's uh, my, my first uh, skip that, that I discovered by myself. And of course, by accident, because I didn't pay attention to anything that was going on. I, I didn't uh, look the, uh, that I skip Arnie's dialogue in time. And uh, then I recognized, hmm, this skipped a few dialogue lines and the dialogue with Ulfric. Um, so yeah, that's apparently how, how you can find skips in Skyrim. So, so uh, I was like, uh, if anybody is able to skip this entire thing, but at least Todd was able to basically uh, save 15 seconds in an auto scroller, which is quite nice. So another thing um, we will see during this Peace Council, um, Todd will make sure we will see that. Um, you, you, you all know how to see the age or count the age of a tree. Um, this also works for Skyrim characters. Um, you don't count the rings, uh, you count the wrinkles on their neck. And um, you will see uh, that's Arnie, uh, and that's Arnie's neck, and Arnie is quite old. <laughs> he has a lot of wrinkles on his neck. Um, so just that we can count, let's find the spot. That's our price for agreeing to a truth. One. This could be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, all, uh, so it's all multiplied by ten. So he's 120 years old. So, so old as a tree. So obviously this is quite, uh, quite uh, uh, fun and stuff. But, 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 what's, but, but what's more fun is why did they go through the effort and texture and model Arnie's neck when it's in the hood all the time. <laughs> and, and you know, he, he's the same age as, as Esper, oh. who's, uh, funny enough, Tullius doesn't seem to be that old. Yeah, so Tullius is basically a newborn. Yeah. Uh, and we are yeah, naked like a newborn, but however. So uh, before this gets out of hand, uh, let's, let's have a donation. Yeah. We've had a $5 donation come in from the person sitting behind this very screen right now, HUD601, who says, See the soaring eagle fly, see the warriors fight and die, see the lightning crack the sky, with the last dragonborn. To the mountain we must go, flash of steel will crush our foes, to the fires of hell below, with the last dragonborn. Let's give that an applause. That was amazing, thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. So All right, and we, we basically uh, passed like three minutes, maybe four minutes of this eight-minute cutscene, so I know you yeah. <laughs> I think that, that's a good time. I wanted to do that at the start, but, but forgot. Uh, I want to, to have a quick shout-out to the restreams of ESA, especially uh, to the Japanese restream, which is commentated by the current world record holder, Lithium. And of course, to our friends at German, the German restream currently commentated uh, by Exo and uh, Shugo. Thank you very much for your work, for all restreams, and at German, vielen Dank an euch und großes Rummel. So, thank you all. Let's give them applause for the great work of the restreams. So another thing, we, you know, we, we got much time during these cutscenes and uh, we, we recognized that these banners, apart from the writing on it, they are all, they have the same pattern. So, you know, this, this hole on the bottom left. Like the same hole pattern. Yeah, it's, it's the same hole there and the same hole above my character. But there's one banner that is mirrored, and for some reason that's 
this one. All three are the same, but this one is more. For reasons only the designers of the game know. So, I, I think it, it has a great reason, of course, but I can't think so, of so it. So, I think it's not even mirrored, because it's the same orientation as the one um, op on the opposite side. So they probably took that one and just copied it, and it, for us it looks mirrored because uh, it's yeah, in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> let's get it over there, yeah, yeah. probably. That's, that's some lazy work there. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the most important dialogue choosing, because we can say, yeah, Ul Ulfric uh, needs to pay compensation for, for a massacre, uh, the, the Imperials say he did. Or his ended, but uh, we could also say, yeah, you know what? Let's take some time and talk about what exactly happened there. This will take several minutes, and therefore, you know, end the run. Um, but easy enough, uh, the dialogue options we need to choose during peace council. Is, it's always the first option, which is the fastest. But this is like the best example for why it's very important that you learn the, the dialogue options you need to choose. Um, and you know, I, I made one small mistake, which yeah, lost like a few seconds, but in here you, you literally can, can lose minutes yeah. for the dialogue options. So we are slowly, um, after this peace council, uh, we will head straight to the end game. Um, there's not much remaining, um, so we j basically just have to uh, capture the dragon now, uh, which we won't even do ourselves, uh, that the other people can do that, we just talk to them then. Um, and then we are basically at the end. Um, so it's not much remaining anymore. Yeah, so everyone, you know, wake up! Wake up, wake up. This is the finale of the run, the last eight minutes packed with action. So everyone who, who slept in during this cutscene, wake up and look at this great finale because we get great platforming um, and another dragon. And uh, yeah. Technically, uh, technically two other dragons, um, but we only fight one of those. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we fight Alduin in, in Valhalla, so... Yeah, that's what I meant. We, we don't find, fight the other one. Yeah, sure, but, but <laughs> Valhalla, this is like... I cannot think of a, a greater finale to, to this main quest line. Did you know that Skyrim has a main quest line? What? Really? Yeah, <laughs> it has. Strange. So, so, so this obviously is a joke to, um, the, to the fact that most people probably run around in this game for like hundreds of hours and never played or finished the main story. Um, me too, actually. Um, uh, I had like three playthroughs, but I never finished the main quest because I just wasn't interested. But already had like two, three hundred hours of game time or play time in this game and I never finished the story. And then on one playthrough I was like, maybe I should do that. Just, just to see. <laughs> So that's the that's the dragon, and he just grabbed the guard and. Bye, guard. Bye, guard. So so uh, yeah, that guard is. He left his now. torch. Oh. <laughs> it just works. <laughs> so, so let's um, have a look. Does he follow us? Yeah. So we won't fight the dragon. Those guys can do that. Um, we don't care. Oh. And, and uh, when we exit again. The dragon is, or should be captured. Yeah, I mean, they did it. And why, why, did, why do they need the dragonborn? What, you, you what know, do they need the dragonborn for? You, you know, Balgruf went down, down the uh, into the ground. I mean, uh, whatever he, whatever he, he, it ma makes him happy. Oh, there he is again. Luckily alive. Uh, and now we will go to Skuldafin, which is Alduin's hideout in this world. A nice little trick here, if you uh, press uh, yes, bring me to Skuldafin, and then open the map and fast travel anywhere, um, you don't have the animation where you ride on that dragon, you just land, just get to uh, Skuldafin. Which saves like 10, 20 seconds-ish? Yeah, it, it's quite a long scene yeah. uh, or animation. And this is the most intense platforming in the game. Yeah. 
Skuldafen. Jumping, uh, jumping up this mountain while the dragon is uh, flying behind you and uh, blasting you with fire. Som sometimes he is uh, able to hit you and, and you don't see anything. You, you just see fire. And you have to blindly uh, manage, your, uh, manage to jump your way up there, which is quite interesting all that, uh, sometimes. So. Okay. Yeah, that was was not perfect, but fast enough. I mean, that wasn't too bad. And it, it skipped a whole uh, dungeon, like yeah. the the final dungeon, and well, of and, course, and a really big dungeon. There's not. Uh, uh. <laughs> there, uh, we do not have our second level up because of the one-handed weapons, so we start drinking. Uh, basically, we we drinking ourselves to Valhalla. Uh, so every time I, I press. Uh, Four or five, which are my hotkeys uh, for the wine, uh, the energy drinks. Uh, my stamina bar will fill up a little, and we will empty a whole bottle of uh, energy drink. Yeah, which is quite a bit. We we collected throughout the run. But you know, there's no no intoxication in Valhalla or Sovngarde. True. <laughs> And so yeah, right now we just have to make our way to the uh, Hall of oh. Heroes. Yeah, Hall of Heroes. The Hall of Heroes uh, to find the three heroes. Um, to, who you actually saw them in the, with the Elder Scroll. Um, they were the ones who used the Dragon Ranch route and uh, the one of them who used the Elder Scroll to send Elderwin forward. And now we will fight alongside them. And since we are the Dragon One, we will be able to kill Elderwin. So. Technically, the only thing we have to do is uh, um, kill the last blow, but I mean, we will hit him a couple more times, just things up a little bit. But, yes. but, now, but now we first have to inspect the doors of the Hall of Heroes. Um, <laughs> I mean, they are really big. We really have to test if they work correctly. And A Hall uh, of Valor. Uh, oh, hall, yeah, a Hall of Valor. You know... Forgive me that, or forgive us that we do not pay that much attention to the names. So yeah, but now let's 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 check the doors if everything is all right. Yeah, the, they work for now. Let's, let's check again. Let's, the, let's test a couple more times. Yeah. Yeah, they work. They yeah still do. Maybe one last time, just to be sure. So so um, obviously this has a reason. Um, every time we go through the door, it advances time a little bit. So the heroes are already back there where we are going now, um, otherwise we would have to wait for them for quite a long time and going through the door multiple times just speeds it up. The grand finale, we need to clear the sky together with the heroes. Also um, fun thing, um, I mean you get the shout immediately with all three words. Um, it doesn't matter if you use one word, two words or three words if you use the shout. Uh, it basically has the same outcome. Waiting for the sound to disappear so I can shout again. So also here, uh, Todd is bumping um, these heroes when they are talking, so they don't stagger, but the dialogue still ends. So it speeds things up a little bit faster. Also, you may recognize these like clouds in the sky. You can see them on the level. Oops, sorry, uh, level up screen. Yeah, that's uh, those are the same patterns and colors like the level up screen. So now. We will get rid of that giant lizard. Shout him. We got nice. him. Let's go. And so, so sometimes he swerves away and, and then he flies around and wastes time. This didn't happen this time. What Todd is doing this time, he stands right in front of Halloween, which I said 20 minutes ago you actually don't want to do. In this case, the reason is he, uh, Todd wants Halloween so to go time's a coming up. backwards. Time's coming up, and we have time! So, just to finish the sentence, um, he wanted to go Alduin a little bit backwards to the heroes, so the heroes can hit more often and kill Alduin faster. And yeah, that's a 1.19.34 real time. Um, usually, um, the game is uh, uh, timed with a load remover, so um, the RTA is, is still something else. But what, what's your PB in RTA? It's, I think, should be 
110-ish. But uh, I think my low times are a bit faster. Uh, yeah, so. okay. But, but I mean, no. uh, during your PB, the game didn't crash and uh, Salok <laughs> didn't do uh, weird shit. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So bas basically, I, I think for a marathon, that's, that's yeah. quite okay. I mean, I mean, there was a reason the estimate was so high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, plus, uh, if we had to, to run as, a, as another character, it would have oh, been, yeah. been slower too. So I'd like to do some shout outs because, uh, you know, for me, it's a, it's a big honor to be here at ESA. So first of all, of course, uh, thanks to ESA for having me um, because I think this is like the pinnacle of, of my speedrunning career because uh, for the next years, for job reasons, I don't think I will find the time uh, to attend another ESA event. So I was uh, very lucky and I, I feel very, very uh, honored that I may be here today uh, at this like last uh, chance for, for the next years for me. And uh, I want to, to have a shout out to, to some, some people. So first of all, thanks to, to Mubongo, we heard of him, uh, Jorge, who got me into streaming in the first place. Thanks to the Crash Bandicoot community, speedrunning community, who got me into speedrunning. Uh, thanks to, to the Skyrim community, to our friends at German, uh, our friends, my team at Slow and Life, who's uh, Mick is part of, and uh, those guys be behind there um, are part of uh, for keeping me in, in the speedrunning community. Uh, thank you, of course, to, to all, all of my uh, chat, or my, my community, for motivating me to, to run this game for basically two years now. And I think the, the final shout out, because this is a topic that, that came up uh, a few times, and of, of course it's... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Whatever. <laughs> I love uh, it, I love let's, it. Let's go back to the game. <laughs> uh, of course, the la last... Oh, hello, Mouse. Uh, Cursor. Um, the last shout out, because this, this comes up uh, quite often in, in my chat and came... Ooh, we, I think we need to cover that donation soon. Uh, so I will speed up. Um, and yesterday in our room it, it came up again. I think I'm, I'm very lucky and very blessed with my family. So I have parents who, despite me being an adult and doing my own things and, and stuff, still are interested in, in what I'm doing. And even though they do not understand speedrunning as, as a whole or why you should do this and stuff, they are really interesting, uh, interested in, in what I do here. And I don't know if you're, you're watching, uh, I, I think this could very well be. I want to say a big thank you to, to my parents and also my brother who, who keep supporting me for, for what I'm doing. Um, and this shows the great relationship we have. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel very blessed for that and want to, to say thank you uh, Mama, Papa, danke für alles. Thank yeah. you so much, so, Todd so, and Mick. Yeah, so, I, so I agree with go. that um, fully, um, also with my parents. Um, also, from my side, huge thanks to ESA for organizing this event and huge thanks for all the don donors and especially huge thanks for the donation that will be read next. Um, I can already see that. Um, so, yeah, thank you, everybody. And, yeah. You are so welcome. Thank you, Todd and Mick, for that glitchless, in quote marks, run. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I will get this donation out before we, before we pass off. We have had a $2,509 donation. <laughs> this donation is a sum of the bits that were donated during the alien isolation run that happened earlier this morning. Um, and that now takes us over $70,000 raised cool. for Alzheimer Fonden. Thank you to everybody for taking part. Stick around with us. We will be back with you after this very short break.